Well, hey, you guys, it's Wednesday. Welcome to episode two of Reference Wednesdays. In this series, I use reference photos produced by Studio Graffiti to warm up and study. Link for this reference pack in my description with 20% off discount code. Today's topic is shorthand. What is shorthand and why you seriously need to incorporate it into your process as an illustrator, comic artist, character designer, or anybody who sketches a lot of people and wants to sketch those people fast. So watch me sketch people fast while I get to the point. Okay, so first thing, the reference pack I'm using here is called Female Cartoon Character and it is absolute gold, you guys. My brain was short-circuiting trying to pick a topic for this video because I picked this pack first um, and it just had like endless uses, seriously, so... Anyway, if you're interested in character design, this is a gold mine of poses. I highly recommend. Um, it's got facial expressions and gestures and a ton of stuff crammed into it. So I've got the 20% off link in my description. And anyways, so the second thing, this video turned out to be longer than I intended initially because I have no stop signal and in my typical fashion, I crammed way too much content into this video, but that's okay. I will also leave a link to a bundle of real-time footage that I use in this video. There's a lot of it and I've got footage for all these specific shorthand techniques you will see me demonstrate in this video. Moving on, back to the topic which is shorthand. What is shorthand? Here is a perfect little Google definition that I just found. A short and simple way of expressing or referring to something. In this particular context, that is figure drawing and character sketching, it's a quick and simple way of jotting down parts of the human body that communicates the essence of the gesture and looks readable. So by that I mean with a single glance, you can instantly tell what's going on. The human brain is wired to recognize patterns and so if you show someone a stick figure, it reads as a human person. Obviously, we're not dealing with this extreme symbolic simplification in this case, but it is kind of a similar concept. You can jot down a few lines and omit like 90% of the details in the actual photo or the hand that you're referencing, but the brain will fill in the rest automatically and just recognize the lines and the pattern as a hand. Contrary to popular belief, shorthand does not only exist for hands. I'm joking. Nobody thinks that. I'm not a comedian. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Basically, the same thing applies to the overall body and various body parts and even objects, but we're not going to go there in this video. So I first learned about this term in animation school in a life drawing class where the purpose of shorthand is to be able to draw an entire figure within 30 seconds up to two minute time frames or three minute time frames. You obviously can't draw much detail at all in this time frame, but you certainly can draw a readable figure that depicts a clear gesture and action. Traditional frame by frame animators need to be able to draw a figure very quickly because as you probably know, even a single minute of animation could require up to like 100 drawings. So why should you care about this if you have no interest in animation? Because the skill is insanely useful in a lot of other art job contexts. For instance, comic book thumbnails, comic book layouts and roughs, illustration thumbnails, sketches, character design exploration, concept art exploration, basically any type of art job that rewards speed, this is a very important skill to have. Yes, okay, so very useful indeed. Let's move on. I'm going to show you some of my shorthand methods or techniques. I don't know if you can call it either one of those things, but the interesting thing about this is that most artists have their own little ways of doing these things because it only really matters as long as you can make use of it either immediately or later on. And also because it really depends on the artist's style, things they like to focus on and figure, etc. But obviously it's still important that a random person will also be able to tell what's going on at a glance. So I'm digressing. So. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the head and face. And my personal approach is either a circle plus triangle or an oval. It works very well for me. Depending on the angle, I will draw any of these basic shapes that I just mentioned. 
and as you can watch me do this on screen, I will include like one real time um, example and then speed up the rest. For the features, I like to seriously exaggerate the facial expression because I thumbnailed like 250 pages of a graphic novel at one time and I needed to be able to get the gist of the character's emotions while reading through the thumbnails to check pacing and it proved to be very very efficient. So one thing that I have to mention is that the most important thing here is the placement of the features, not their details. So you can draw extremely simple facial expressions but you have to have to keep in mind that the proportions of where you're placing these super simple facial features will correlate with your actual style. So you're not exaggerating the proportions in any way, you're just, you're basically putting placeholders of the features where the more detailed, more elaborate features will eventually go. This worked so well for me, I can't even say, like I can't repeat it enough, it's super helpful with comics or like trying to do quick thumbnails or um any sort of little planning illustrations uh anyways so another golden rule for stylized character art is to basically work your way up to details um and start with very simple shapes this easily applies to what i just spoke about where you can draw super simple facial features where they can just be like a line and just a circle for the mouth you know anything like that so as long as you place the fe facial features in a way that still retains the proportions of your style you're good to go so the second thing i'm going to talk about is the torso i can't get into too much detail here but you can probably gather a lot from just looking at the screen here and I'm going to show you one real-time example and then speed up the rest. And like I mentioned earlier in this video, if you're interested in acquiring the real-time footage of this and just watching it on your own time and see what you can gather from it, I will include a link in my description of a Gumroad bundle of all the real-time footage from this video. So I was obviously using a bunch of references from this pack to quickly jot down the torso. I utilize straight lines and curves um, about equally, I would say. Some people gravitate toward mostly curved lines and some toward mostly straight lines. I'm somewhere in between, depending on what I have in mind. I have to note that I can only really do this quickly and efficiently because I do know bone structure and muscular structure to some extent and that's pretty vital so y'all gotta study that stuff. Yeah, the great thing about drawing very simple figures is that if you do it well and if it's accurate in proportions, in some ways it will look very similar to your final product. It does for me. Sometimes I'm even underwhelmed. Something I sank an extra several hours into can look nearly identical to the shitty thumbnail zoomed out. So that's just the reality of the situation. But anyways, yeah, I, I did not get into the anatomical structure of the torso. I actually have a tutorial for torsos. It's a little bit dated, but I still pretty much look at it in the same way that I describe in the tutorial on my gumroad. And I do think that you can gather a lot of information just by watching me do it any much better than I can explain anyway because I don't want to go over the anatomical stuff because you can find many many other videos doing this so I think the value here is to just watch someone else demonstrate quick quick gesture drawings of the torso so the next step would be the legs of course and I gotta tell you guys, I love drawing legs. They do give me a lot of trouble sometimes, but only because I love them so much. I can get obsessive about making legs look beautiful. And quick note here, please don't mistake your idea of beauty for mine because I have a ton of personal preferences, obviously, as does everybody else. So to me, the legs that I draw are pretty nice. Anyway, I have developed a very specific habit. So like i keep saying in this video just watch the demo for best results it's not the easiest thing to explain like i said but also this is a quick youtube video and not a master class uh, i'm planning to tackle the topic of connecting body parts in a future episode i know that this particular topic is a huge one but here let's just focus on my basic shorthand for legs so i basically draw a bunch of legs from the reference photos and then a few 
from my imagination just to show you how I tend to structure them when I want to jot them down as quickly as possible. And on to the next portion, which is the feet. So you guys, <laughs> feet are basically my worst enemy. They're just so weird and complicated, very difficult to make feet look beautiful, for me anyways. I have always found hands much easier to understand than feet. But I still managed to develop a bunch of shorthands for these things and actually had a massive breakthrough on that very recently. So if you watch me sketch down these feet, I certainly tend to gravitate towards a bunch of specific shapes that you can probably notice by watching me do it. I'm not going to real time explain every line that I put down because I that's just not the types of videos that I generally make. I might do that at some point in the future, but I did draw a bunch of these feet just to demonstrate to you guys how I approach them if I had to if I have to draw them very quickly and hopefully you can learn a lot just by looking at these examples. The gist of my method is the following. So I break the foot down into three different parts, the heel, which attaches to the lower leg, the toes, and the middle part that connects the heel to the toes. The overall shape is something like a wedge. I found this to be the easiest way for me to understand feet personally, but of course there are a lot of complications in the structure and just a wedge alone doesn't quite suffice, but I think it's definitely a good place to start. For me, it simplifies the process a lot and it actually really, really helped me to understand the shape in three in a three-dimensional way, I suppose. So it's the most basic shape of a foot, I would say, and that's what makes it a lot easier to understand. The aforementioned complications are the most prominent in the soul, for me anyway. The shape is difficult to draw from different angles, mostly because a part of the inner sole is raised and does not touch the ground when a person stands, unless you have fallen arches, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> anyway, a recent hack I discovered that helped me with this immensely is to approach the outer side of the sole, bottom of the foot, with a straight line, since the entirety of it does touch the ground on that side, but to add a little tweak to this approach when drawing the planted inner sole, a standing foot, the inner standing foot, in case that was unclear. So I first draw a small line where the heel touched the ground and a small line where the toes touch the ground, and then I connect them with a little arch. This does the trick very effectively and definitely looks super believable. I don't know if this is super obvious to some of you, but apparently it took me like 15 years to realize, so what can I say? <laughs> Damn you feet. Next. So now let's move on to the arms. Non-jacked arms are super easy. <laughs> Muscular arms on the other hand, not so much. Definitely one of my weakest points. Uh, arm muscles to me are still kind of a big question mark, although I know a bunch of simple, quick tricks to make them look believable. But when it comes to skinny or slightly chubby arms, I definitely 
know how to handle that much much better i absolutely love drawing arms especially elbows forearms truth be told i get like immense levels of satisfaction from drawing a good line especially a few good lines that come together to form a great shape i live for this this is why i absolutely love inking and i wanted a tangent this is actually why i decided to use a solid brush with no transparency or transfer sensitivity or whatever so that it's it, it simulates like using a pen and so that is why it kind of reminded me of how i go about inking because i do often use this brush to ink anyways tangent so yeah one of my favorite things to draw in the human body apart from the face and hands is elbows that's right just watch me carve out those elbows <laughs> god damn is there anything more satisfying yeah like i said these examples are all drawn pretty fast and of course i included a couple of real time sketches so that you guys can get an idea of how long it takes me to draw this type of stuff all right so if you're having issues with drawing arms especially connecting them to hands or especially connecting hands to them here's a game changer tip for y'all the lower arm has two bones radius and ulna and one that's more visible on the surface beneath the skin is the ulna it connects directly from the elbow to the little bump at the end of your arm where it connects to the hand. This bump is on the side of the pinky looking at the top of your hand. So you might be wondering why I'm not using any real anatomical terminology here. Well, cause shit don't matter. Just remember that the bump connects directly to the elbow with a straight line. You can even trace it with your fingers. Just do it now. If you, if you don't already know this, try to remember it at all costs. And now you can watch me constantly make use of this crucial anatomical detail to construct arms and attach hands to them very easily. You're welcome. And now let's move on to hands because I left the best for last. I pretty much guess that this one is probably the one most of you guys were waiting for. And so I obviously have my own trusty hand drawing method and I happen to start with a square. So watch this, bam, there's a hand so fast, started with the square. To me, it's the easiest, easiest method to draw hands. And of course it's not, it's not quite that simple because there are, there are some things that I do, some little tricks that basically modify the shape, the, the square shape that I initially jot down. But starting with the square basically gives me enough of a framework to kind of place everything on top of it and make it work. That's just how I've been doing it for years. And I can't say I have that much trouble with hands. Sometimes to make them look good, I do have to put in quite a bit of extra time because I'm so obsessive about shapes. But Generally speaking, the ones that you see here were done pretty quickly and I I think that they serve as pretty good examples of hand sh short hands. So, yeah, also another thing is looking back on the stuff that I drew for an example, I guess they're relatively detailed. I don't know if that would like necessarily be a, the best example of shorthand because I would assume that you were expecting something simpler than this, but maybe that's something I will get back to. I would still consider these pretty fast though. So one more thing I wanted to mention was that the two things that are essentially automatically at the forefront of all my decisions are beauty plus clarity. And I kind of see them as the top two priorities that are absolutely equal because just because a hand is clearly a hand doesn't mean it's a nice hand or like a hand that's nice to look at, aka a beautiful hand, because we're talking about drawings here. And honestly, just beautiful is pretty good on its own, but it can also be very boring. So just beauty alone isn't quite enough. And that's why I usually need a little bit more, but this is where I can get, um, this is where I can go off on a lengthy tangent. So. Yeah, another thing I wanted to mention is that using references to draw hands is pretty tricky because 
I mean, okay, hands are super, super complicated. I, I personally find them to be a little bit simpler than feet, but that's not necessarily a common belief. Most people find feet to, most artists that I've known and spoken to about this type of stuff find feet actually easier to draw, but not for me. Anyways, the thing with hands is that photos really do tend to skew them a lot when it comes to perspective or sometimes the angle is just so weird because there's so many moving parts that you can't quite see what's happening or if you copied exactly what you see one to one it'll just look bad whether whether it's accurately copied or not or reference or whatever so when i use references for hands i will often modify them in a way that it'll still um, essentially communicate the same type of gesture, but certain elements I will move around in order just to make it easier to read and to make it look more like a hand. I know this sounds kind of insane because you know, you'd know think that the, the most real thing that you can look at is an actual photo of a person's hand, but you can easily have the same type of problem when you look at people's bodies in photos as well because sometimes just the angle is so weird and it ends up looking very unnatural even though technically it is natural that your job as an artist is to kind of clarify what's going on and make it easier to understand at first glance because you should always keep in mind that your primary job especially when it comes to things like illustration and comics is not to convey an exactly type of realistic, super idiosyncratic pose or gesture. It's mostly to make it so that uh, whatever the character is doing is a believable and B is is easy, easy to understand, super easy to read and understand, which is why exaggeration often comes into play. And a lot of the times you want to change little elements to aid in that clarity aspect of things so that was a little bit of a tangent but hopefully i don't know it added some time to my rambling footage so that you can watch me draw some hands and yeah that's essentially the end of this video i'm actually realizing that i approach figure drawing a lot like sculpting something i never really noticed before who knew maybe i should try sculpting yeah anyways so <laughs> all right now that I went over all the points, uh, there isn't really much to summarize. I usually like to summarize these videos with um, a quick sentence that would describe what the video was about. But yeah, no, essentially shorthands, little little techniques that I use a lot, utilize while drawing figures. And this is all, all in order to aid my ability to draw stylized characters because that's generally what I've been doing for a living for quite some time now, so. I would consider myself something like an expert when it comes to that. But yeah, obviously in a very narrow lane, but all right. So we're basically at the end of the video and I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching this one and subscribing to my channel if you have, if you haven't yet consider. I will try to make a lot more content like this, although I gotta say that the amount of time and effort that it took me to put this video together was pretty intense, so I'm gonna have to probably take it down a notch <laughs> for the next one in this series. But yeah, uh, like I mentioned, the reference pack that I used is called the female cartoon character, and I will have a link in my description. So if you wanted to check it out, that is a small way to support me because I do get a small commission from the sales. And also I will include a bundle of all the real-time footage on my Gumroad page. By the way, I know that I completely missed my Friday video last week and that is totally a failure on my part, but I'm gonna just let that one slide and also wanted to let you guys know that I'm currently working on a sketchbook tour type of video of some of my very old art ranging back all the way to when I was about 14 or 15. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.